Welcome to 5Spice, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video, I'll demonstrate the tool that creates a SPICE subcircuit from a 5Spice schematic. This is an advanced feature of the professional edition of 5Spice, so I assume you already know how to use the program. Let's start with the simple amplifier we see in the schematic. This is a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 2. As usual, we have a signal source to provide an input to the amplifier and a test po point at the amplifier's output. This allows us to run simulations and determine our circuit behaves as we expect. However, we will be able to exclude the signal source and test point from the SPICE subcircuit that we create. Once you are satisfied with the circuit, the next step is to convert the schematic to a subcircuit schematic. So we go up here to tools and we find make schematic into subcircuit. So we click on that and we get a warning that this is an irreversible conversion of our project file. So I recommend you make a backup copy of the, your project file before you go further. When you're ready, you press, press OK. And notice that this subcircuit schematic block here has appeared in the upper right corner. Double clicking this symbol opens the subcircuit tool which includes instructions on how to do this. So the first step is to enter a name for the subcircuit. So we're going to call it MyAmp1 and we need a name for the file, the text file that contains the subcircuit. And if you're only going to have one subcircuit in the file, you might as well use the same name. Now look at the external connections page here. And notice it says required. So basically on this page we are going to have to tell the tool which nodes in the schematic are going to connect the subcircuit to a main circuit that would be using our subcircuit. So we call these the external connections and in order to get that information in, into this, we're going to go back to the schematic and add export links, which will then show up in this list. So let's just go and do it. And the export links in the, are in the professional edition under the text menu. And basically we're going to put in one we call input and name these links, give these links a name that reflects their functionality. So we're going to call these import and export and we'll wire them into the circuit, the output to the output and the input to the input. So these will be the external connections from our amplifier to a main schematic or any, any main SPICE program that wants to use this as a subcircuit. If we come back up here and we come to our external connections page where we were a moment ago, notice that the two links we added appear here. So the important thing to remember is that these connections will show in the subcircuit file as a node number. And with our tool here, we will add a legend that associates this name with the node number. So it's pretty important that you choose names that reflect the functionality. So you might want to have VCC, input, output, things like that. The next step is to go on to the next page in the tool about signal sources. This page gives you the option of whether you want a signal source in which you may have more than one, to be included in the subcircuit or not. For our amplifier, we don't want it to be included, so we don't have to do anything here. But if you were had something which you wanted to produce a signal in a transient analysis as part of the subcircuit, such as a clock or something like that, you would check the box here. So now that we've gone through these three required pages here, 
we're going to try and make the sub-circuit. So this will activate the tool to create one. And we get a warning message that we first have to go back to the schematic and run a DC bias analysis before we can actually make the sub-circuit. So we click on OK to accept all of the information that we've entered. And we come up here, well, we come up to our analysis dialog and we can see DC bias is already selected. And so we can just click on this to run DC bias. Um, we can see we have zero but anyway, it did work. We come back here. And now, now we try again. So the subcircuit was created, and this is the file dialog asking us what name we want to save it under. And because I already ran this through once before making the video, you can see that I've already got these names in here. But you type, it will automatically use the file name that you said. The, the default extension is MOD, which gives Windows fits, but that's what we've got. And basically, in this case, I'm going to overwrite the existing file, even though it's just the same. And it says subcircuit file is created. And all of the entries that we put into, into our selections are now saved to the project. And also, if there was a previous file, like there was, it was renamed and saved with the .pak extension. So we just did it. So now let's make life a little more interesting. Suppose we're um, back in the schematic suddenly, and we wanted to have a parameter for our subcircuit which would allow us to vary the gain simply by changing the parameter, subcircuit parameter. So in this circuit, let's suppose we're going to accomplish that by varying the value of R2. So the first thing we need to do is change this fixed value into a parameter, which we will need to define here in a moment. And now we need to go back up into our subcircuit window tool, I mean, and take a look at the page that's called Pass Parameters. These are parameters that uh, SPICE programs can pass to a subcircuit from the main program, or in 5SPICE case, the main schematic. So suppose we define a parameter gain, and we need a default value. Doesn't matter really what we put in here. So the user of our subcircuit will be able to pass in a value for gain. But we still have to actually make that change, that resistor value. So we go to internal parameters here. Now the internal parameters for the subcircuit are just the same as the user-defined parameters for the schematic itself. We're just trying to distinguish them between the pass parameters and basically the user-defined parameters. Hopefully you've watched the video on using user-defined parameters. So what we would do here is now we have that parameter name that I gave to R2 and we need to put in an equation for how this is going to work. So basically we could say 10k times gain minus 1. So that's the equation for the non-inverting amplifier. So gain is defined here, and this is a user-defined parameter for our two value based on gain. So now basically we would accept all of those things, and we need to, aha, uh -huh. yes, I made an error. So this is a good reminder. So whenever we're using a parameter name here, we have to enclose it in the curly braces. 
And now we need to rerun the DC BIOS. So I'm just going to press this. And that's essential because of the way Spice, 5 Spice makes its subcircuits. So you just have to do it. And now we hit Make Subcircuit. And we have now created the same subcircuit, but with this game parameter. So I'm going to name it here myamp1 param to distinguish it from the first one. And the name is already saved because I ran this again before we did this video. So we'll overwrite it. And notice now when we save things, the file, the location that it's saved to shows here. The date it's saved on shows there. You can enter a version number. So if you keep your schematics names with version numbers appended to their end, you can enter that same version here and it will appear in your subcircuit file so you'll know exactly which subcircuit file went with which version of your schematic. And now I've already done this before so I'm going to bring up the file that we just created. So here we are. So we have a date, a time, in this case, that's me. So here we are. It's subcircuit my app. The node numbers are two and three. The functions of these two nodes, node two is the input. You remember, here's the input in our circuit. There's the output. And node three is the output. In the description of the subcircuit line, we have this params gain equals 2, which again we defined. And this says the default version of gain is 2. But also because it's part of this dot subcircuit line, it indicates to SPICE programs that they can pass in a different value for gain. We, and then we come down to this line. And this shows us how we get the value for our 2 from the initial fixed value, which was 10k in the first schematic that didn't have parameters. And now we have gain here minus 1. So basically, this is the formula for the non-inverting amplifier. Then these lines here were created by 5Spice to show its um, gain block amplifier. That's why it says expansion of linear op amp U1. So that's this block. And then basically here was, here's R1. And let's take a look at that. There's R1. There's R1. Here's R2, where we have R2 value. And here's R2 with R2 value. And again, the curly braces, this line dot param defines R2 value. In our case, it's defining it in terms of gain, which we can pass in in our main SPICE program or main SPICE schematic when we call this. OK, so let's close this out. And where would we find the files we've just created? Well, go up to Tools and take a look at the library entry, which is the first one. And you'll see this gives the library location on your computer. And they've, the files are saved in the 5 Spice library. The easiest thing is to press the Open Library button. And basically, you'll see the library. We want to look under subcircuits. And here's the simple amplifier here that did not have parameters. And here's the one we saved with parameters. So there's one final issue. Different SPICE programs have differences in their syntax, especially PSPICE, which varies from most other SPICE programs. So if you're planning on distributing the subcircuit you create to different people, you should read the 5 SPICE help on compatibility among different SPICE programs. It depends on which things you basically put into your circuit. So that's what I wanted to show you, and thanks for watching.